Hi guys, today I'm going to be talking about Kodak uh, and the recent antics that have happened with the share price. So, as I'm sure you guys have seen, Kodak received a loan uh, to start producing pharmaceutical products uh, and this has caused the share price to spike up to about $40. However, recently it has since declined down to about $20 per share. So in this video I'm going to be talking a little bit about whether now is the right time to be buying Kodak shares or whether you should just completely stay away from it. So to get a bit more context in the company, I'm going to be having a little bit of a look at the history of Kodak. So Kodak filed for bankruptcy in 2012 after they failed to keep up with the times in the photography market, choosing to stick to producing film cameras rather than switching to digital cameras like the competitors in the market were doing. So Kodak then made a comeback in 2018 when they entered the cryptocurrency industry. This did cause shares to rise by about 300%. Um, although this hype did fizzle out uh, and it saw the share drop from about $10, um, which was the peak in 2018, uh, right back down to about $2. Uh, and this has been the share price since then, uh, right up until about last week. So last week they did announce that they were taking a government loan to pivot their company into the pharmaceutical market. Uh, and this has then seen the share price rocket upwards. So the Trump loan the reason why this is all sort of taking place. So Kodak have, have accepted a $765 million loan from the Trump administration uh, to start manufacturing ingredients for pharmaceutical products. So since this announcement, a lot of hype has been built up around the company uh, and shares have once again spiked up, this time by rising the more than 1000%, seeing the stock reach heights of about $50 per share. Uh, and Kodak has produced pharmaceutical products um, a long time ago when they were still a photography company, uh, but this was only a minor revenue generator at the time. Uh, and it still means that this is quite an unusual business shift. So the loan is being given on behalf of the Defense Production Act, um, as Trump wants to reduce America's dependency on foreign countries for their pharmaceutical products. So Trump is essentially trying to make America produce more of their pharmaceutical products uh, within the country. So are Kodak the right company for this loan? Now, Kodak state that by leveraging their vast infrastructure, deep expertise in chemical manufacturing and heritage of innovation and quality, they will play a critical role in the return of a reliable American pharmaceutical supply chain. There is, however, a big question mark over the statement that they have made. So it's quite hard to believe that their expertise in chemical manufacturing is superior to any of the major pharmaceutical companies that are in America right now. Uh, additionally, Kodak claim they have an, a heritage of innovation uh, in the statement that they made. Um, but this is simply not really true at all, um, as this is the main reason why they started to fall off um, before they went bankrupt. So, yeah, they started to fall off um, or fall behind their competitors in the camera and print industry um, and this was due to them failing to innovate uh, and having a reluctancy to switch their production to focus on digital cameras. So on the plus side, uh, they do have existing facilities in New York and Minnesota uh, that are set to be expanded under a new Kodak Pharmaceuticals arm. So they do have some, uh, they do have some things going for them and they do have some existing facilities. Uh, however, this is, again, still quite an unusual pivot in the company. So another thing that has to be considered before buying this stock is the upper management problems that are within the company. So it's quite hard to have any faith in Kodak's upper management. If they can drive a successful company to bankruptcy thanks to poor management decisions, then it's quite hard to, or it's quite hard for, for investors to have faith that they can make the company successful uh, in an industry that's relatively unknown territory for them. So Kodak does have a history of poor decision making, um, as we've discussed before, uh, and specifically um, when they produced the world's first digital camera in 1975, um, but they just sat on the concept and didn't push forward with it, uh, and this allowed competition to catch up and overtake them. Uh, another thing is the volume of trading activity picked up uh, in the days before the big, big announcement for them. 
Um, so this includes just under 47,000 shares being purchased by the company's chief executive uh, just a month before the news dropped. So this again raises questions over the ethics of the company, um, as well as inside trading problems that could be happening. Uh, and this could cause problems uh, down the line if there's an investigation into this. So is Kodak a good investment overall? So not in my opinion. I do not think it is a good investment. I certainly think that there is some potential for them to sort of relight the company and start being quite profitable in the future again uh, into the pharmaceutical market. Um, but I just think there's too many problems um, that they've got uh, that are going to stop them from doing that. But again, that is just my opinion. So maybe you want to gain some more exposure in the pharmaceutical industry, um, but if that is the case, then why would you pick a company like Kodak that has a history of failure uh, and also still needs to get to grips with a completely new industry that they've only had a small, um, small amount of experience with in the past? There is so much that can go wrong with Kodak due to the lack of experience in the field, uh, which makes me believe that other large pharmaceutical companies would probably make more sense to invest in. They already have large infrastructure, infrastructure set up uh, with proven success and proven results in the past. Um, and that is without the use of a government loan. Hey guys, just a quick video interrupter. Um, I realized that I didn't actually mention any alternative pharmaceutical companies, um, American pharmaceutical companies to invest in. Um, so I've just got a couple of examples here to talk about. Um, so the first one is Pfizer. Um, they pay a 4% or just under a 4% dividend yield. Um, and the other one is Johnson & Johnson, um, who pay a 2.77% dividend yield. Um, and as you can see by their stock uh, price graph, they have sort of been going up ever since they started. Um, it's just continuously been going up. Um, so just these two companies, for example, are two alternative companies to Kodak um, that are probably a lot more reliable to invest in. Um, they already have um, large infrastructure set up already um, and as well as that they've got a proven history of success and profitability um, without using government loans. So if you want to gain more exposure to the pharmaceutical industry in your portfolio, um, Kodak is, you know, it's not the only option that there's, that's out there. There are lots of other companies, probably a lot better companies than Kodak. Um, so these are two examples um, that I've got. There is also um, Glaxo Klein Smith, um, sorry, Glaxo Smith Klein. Um, they are a company that are based in the UK on the London stock market. Um, so they're also another quite good company to invest in. Um, so yeah, that's just a few examples of alternative companies to go for. Um, also, if you are enjoying the video so far, uh, remember to give it a like. It really does help me out. Uh, and also be sure to subscribe if you want to see more content. Without further ado, um, let's get back to the video. So another thing to remember is Kodak will have to pay back the money within the next 25 years. So without being without them having a clear path to profitability um, right now, um, due to all the uncertainties around the company, um, there's no guarantee that they're going to be able to pay this money back. Um, so again, that is a big sort of question mark uh, if you're going to be investing in the company. So the way that I look at it is Trump's loan is sort of like a band-aid over a gaping wound. So Kodak was a failing business that was not really going anywhere special before they got this loan. Um, and for example, in Q1 of 2020, uh, their revenue declined by 8% to $267 million. Uh, and that was them, that meant that they had to report a loss of $111 million for that quarter. So again, it's not particularly promising. Uh, they also only have $207 million in cash on its balance sheet. So again, none of this is particularly appealing uh, for a company that you're going to be investing in. So it doesn't really strike me as a good investment. And sort of my final point on this is that, in my opinion, I think it's a specul speculative investment at the best. Um, and I think that if you are going to be going um, and taking up a position in this stock, then I would advise to stick to a small amount, a small percentage of your portfolio as there is quite a high chance that you could lose a lot of your money, if not all of it. So yeah, that's just my opinion though. And remember that, you know, I'm not a financial advisor at all. Uh, this is all just sort of entertainment um, 
it's, it's my opinion purely for entertainment purposes so make sure you do your own research um maybe you want to invest in it maybe you don't but yeah just do your own research for sure and that is all for today guys remember to leave a like if you enjoyed let me know in the comments section whether you are thinking of buying into kodak or whether you already have bought into it uh, i'd be interested to know what you're what you've been doing with it um and remember to subscribe as well if you want to see more content like this in the future uh, and apart from that guys thanks for watching